गुड इवनिंग गायस पीपल हु आर वॉचिंग कैन आई जस्ट हैव यूर थम्स अप टू नो दैट द ऑडियो विजुअल इज वर्किंग वेल सो आई होप यू कैन सी मी यू कैन हेयर मी यू कैन सी माई पॉइंटर हेयर ऑन द बोर्ड ओके सो पीपल हु आर इन प्लीज प्लीज जस्ट पुट योर कमेंट्स इन द चैट बॉक्स द चैट बॉक्स इज विजिबल टू मी सो आई जस्ट गेट स्टार्टेड टूडे विद द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ द टोटल नी रिप्लेसमेंट सो दिस इज द सेकेंड सेशन इन लाइन previous session i talked of the total hip replacement surgery and this session i'm going to talk of the basic principles behind a total knee replacement surgery and to welcome you all i am dr mukul mohindra your orthopedic instructor here at an academy so most of you are in so i think we can get going okay i'm just sharing this small question that came up in the ina ct paper a little time back 60 years old person she's undergone a replacement After nine years, she is landed up with loose knee, a troublesome problem you find with both hip and knee replacements. Now this implant had to be removed because it had gone loose. So a biopsy was taken, and that was examined with this eosinophilic pigmentation and this blackish pigmentation that you can see. Now you were supposed to comment upon the likely possibility, looking at the history and the biopsy. Hello, Salima. now this was one question that was there and not long before this another very tough question was there in the aims paper that was based upon this patellar clunk syndrome in total knee replacement that result from interposition of the synovial tissue at and trust me i could hardly find anyone getting the correct answers on these areas perhaps because i feel that the concepts surrounding these advanced orthopedic surgeries like a hip and a knee replacement are very blue to the undergraduate zone so that's the whole intent behind this session i have already talked of the basic principles of hip replacement so now i also intend to fill your pocket now with the basic principles and the concerns behind a knee replacement surgery so guys who are in please pay attention as i get started why it's important for you to understand this particular advanced surgery as of now Although we don't have the Indian statistics, but I think the U.S. statistics would give you a fairly good idea how commonly these surgeries are being performed every day. That's a huge number, and you know, population of some of the small countries in the world. Okay, so that's the incredible amount of replacement surgeries that are going across the world today. So no way, even as an undergraduate, you can be complacent enough to say that I don't know about a knee replacement surgery. Plenty of questions have now started coming into your MCQ exams. based upon these areas so first of all introducing you to the type of the replacement surgeries you have at the knee a surgeon may opt for a unicondylar knee replacement surgery or a total knee replacement surgery when he intends to go for an arthroplasty around the knee now if you talk of a unicondylar knee replacement it is the single compartment of the knee that is replaced and let me tell you by and large this tends to be the medial compartment rather than the lateral compartment or it could also be the patello femoral compartment that is replaced so at least at the undergraduate level a unicondylar knee replacement should mean that you are only going to replace this medial compartment of the t the medial femoral condyle the medial tibia now in a total knee replacement both compartments will be replaced so this is a bicompartmental replacement which means both medial and lateral compartments are going to be replaced replacement of the patello femoral compartment by and large is surgeon's choice that may be added on to the bicompartmental replacement if the surgeon wishes as that can be left also so there are some very fine indications to decide this last point that remains more or less the surgeon's choice so at your level single compartment of the knee usually the medial one replaced there will be unicondylar knee replacement both medial and lateral compartments replaced there will be a total knee replacement yes when to perform which replacement let me be very clear 
in case you are going to ask me the indication for any replacement surgery i clearly pointed out in my lecture on hip replacement the indication for a replacement arthro uh, 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 you know replacement arthroplasty simply tends to be osteoarthritis in the joint osteoarthritis means the joint cartilage is gone and this is checked by the fact that on x ray you don't find the joint space so when you don't find the joint space that is where you opt for a replacement arthroplasty basically the space you see between the two bones is not empty space there is cartilage in it the articular cartilage now since cartilage is not visible on the x ray it appears as a joint space so when the space is absent that is where you take it as osteoarthritis and that is where you plan a joint replacement surgery that is arthroplasty so i hope you can see very well here it is only the medial joint space that is involved so this is exclusively a medial compartment osteoarthritis in the knee and i think now i can fairly tell you that this will be an indication for a unicondylar arthroplasty at the knee single compartment can be replaced but if you see this picture both medial and lateral joint spaces are gone so this is a bicompartmental osteoarthritis at the knee so this will be the indication for a total knee replacement surgery and not a unicondylar knee replacement surgery so i hope salima other people watching you are crystal clear as when to choose a replacement arthroplasty when you don't find joint space fine because the cartilage is gone and i hope you are clear it's only the medial compartment that is involved will go the unicondylar knee replacement it's both the compartment that are gone will the total knee replacement surgery clear enough guys clear enough now i have been speaking again again this word replacement so let me just pull my ears here please strictly speaking i would say the replacement what is a misnomer because in reality uh, a knee replacement surgery is strictly an articular resurfacing that's it so what i mean by this word articular resurfacing see we remove almost like say 9 mm of bone on the femur side we remove almost like 9 mm of bone on the tpl side and within this 18 mm we fit in our implant in fact i'll tell you in a knee replacement surgery you have a femoral cup lower side you have a tibial tray and in between the two you have what you call as a polyethylene spacer this femoral cup will be around 9 mm thick the tibial tray would be around 3 mm thick okay and the polyethylene spacer would be around 8 mm thick so if i just add up everything this will be around 20 mm and here 2 mm you can have for the cartilage so this will also add up to be around 20 mm so 9 mm of bone on this side 2 mm of that cartilage and around 9 mm of bone on this side this is 20 mm means 2 cm of bone that is cut a cup put on the femur a tray fixed on the tibia and the gap filled with a rubber like substance a polyethylene spacer so you can see i've just cut the femur i've just plated the tibia and just put in a rubber in between so strictly speaking what i've done is simply an articular resurfacing so clear with this guys clear with this so i hope you guys are thoroughly clear about you know what comprises a knee replacement surgery it's just an articular resurfacing of the femur where you cup the femur where you plate the tibia and in between the two components you put in a polyethylene spacer 
okay so it will be 9 mm of femur bone that will be cut it will be 2 3 mm of this tibia that will be cut and this joint space will be filled up with a spacer clear enough guys perfect now now as far as the fixation of these components is concerned there's only one type of a fixation that is popular in the knee replacement surgery that is a cemented fixation this cemented fixation makes use of that popular substance we are very much familiar with i know what you call as bone cement and bone cement i think you are very well familiar it's nothing else it's a chemical compound that's simply called as polymethyl methacrylate so this is a glue like substance this is what we use to stick this cup onto the femur and this tray onto the tibia so knee replacement is exclusively a cemented fixation please mind you i had spoken of a total hip replacement surgery in my previous session and i talked of two type of fixations a cemented fixation and an uncemented fixation i had told you that when you don't use cement we use special implants which have the property of bone in growth so that uncemented fixation is by and large obsolete in total knee arthroplasty that was tried ended up with failure disastrous results so as a rule guys a knee replacement surgery is always cemented fixation clear with it? now as far as the types of these total knee replacement implants we have with us the total knee replacement implants they're basically categorized into two types one is a cruciate retaining prosthesis and one is a cruciate substituting prosthesis okay this cruciate word here basically refers to the posterior cruciate ligament of the knee so i mean to say there is one category of prosthesis that retains the posterior cruciate ligament of the knee and there is another category of prosthesis that substitutes this posterior cruciate ligament in the knee now i know what will be coming to your mind that why is this teacher running after this ligament pcl but we've been all talking about more of the acl injuries the treatment in acl injuries that's more popular but why am i so stressing upon the pcl i'll tell you see pcl is an extremely important ligament in the knee because it produces a special movement we call as femoral rollback this femoral rollback is essential in case you want the knee flexion to cross 90 degree so if you want to sit cross legged you want to use the indian toilets see only two types of toilets in the world western or india so this is where india you know is on the front line of the you know innovation so so in case you wish to squat you wish to sit cross legged you need a flexion beyond 90 degree so in case you need a flexion beyond 90 degree you need to have the pcl because it produces that very popular movement that's called the femoral roll back i'll just show you what's that so if you see this knee it has been flexed to 90 degree i hope you can see this posterior meniscus contacting the femur so that is what happens that when you flex the normal knee to 90 degree this posterior tibia will contact the femur and the flexion will stop now if this flexion has to go beyond 90 degree this femur femur has to go back it has to roll back and this dragging back of the femur that allows the flexion to cross 90 degrees produced by pcl see this excellent diagram this ligament will be the pcl going from the back of the tibia to the front of the femur so if you flex this knee to 90 degree you can see the tibia coming from the back and attaching on the femur so as the knee will flex the pcl will become tight and this pcl will you know pull the femur back 
bringing it to the edge of the tibia and this femoral rollback will allow the knee flexion to cross 90 degree. Now that is the common constraint that if you take up a patient for a replacement surgery, his big demand will be that he should be able to flex the knee to complete extent. So it is essential to give the femoral rollback. Now one easy way is that you leave the PCL intact. But this can be only left intact in early stages of osteoarthritis. Because if it will be a late stage of osteoarthritis, PCL will be scarred, damaged. So when the PCL is scarred or you can say damaged, even if you will leave the PCL, it cannot function. So here you will have to substitute the PCL by some kind of a mechanism so that the rollback continues and flexion can be attained beyond 90 degree. So in a PCL sparing me, simply the PCL will be left intact to give you the femoral rollback. But in a PCL substituting knee design, the PCL will be substituted by a special mechanism that's called a cam post mechanism. It will be this cam post mechanism in the substituting knees that will be responsible for giving you the femoral rollback. Now please see, there is a notch we cut in the center of the femur condylis in a PCL substituting knee. Inside it on this tibial tray, there is a post and running between the two condyles, there is a cam. I'll zoom into this area. See, this projection from the tibial tray is called the post. And this horizontal connection between the two femoral cups condyles is called the cam. So together they constitute the cam post mechanism. Now this is the cam, this is the post. So when this knee will flex beyond nine, like 90 degree, this cam will hit on this post. And this post will push the cam back. And in this way, this cam post mechanism will produce that femoral rollback, even if the PCL is scarred, damaged and absent. So are you guys thoroughly clear with the concept behind the types of knee replacement prosthesis? the PCL sparing knee and the PCL substituting knee and I hope you are clear with the importance of PCL in a knee replacement surgery. So Anil, Muthu, Gary, Pui, Sal Salima. So, so can I have you guys raising your thumb and letting me know that you are clear with this concept? Because let me tell you this concept is absolutely essential. In case you wish to answer that very popular question that troubled up so many people in the AIMS paper a couple of years back that was on patellar clunk syndrome. So what is patellar clunk syndrome, I'll tell you. Now suppose you are doing a PCL substituting knee. So to substitute the PCL, you have to put in the cam post mechanism. And to put in the cam post mechanism, you have to cut a notch in center of femur. Like you can see, there is a notch cut in the center of the femur here. Now the problem is that in this PCL substituting knee, as patient extends knee, sometimes synovium at superior pole of patella catches in the notch cut leading to this cluck. So see, you have cut this notch here. So as you are going to extend the knee and your knee is going to come to around this 70 degree flexion, the synovium at the superior pole of the patella might get trapped in this cut, this notch. The notch was cut for the campus mechanism. 
so this is how that extension leads to clunk in case you have not cut the notch in a proper way you've cut it too deep or you have left too much of synovium on the under surface of the patella so this was the question in that exam patellar clunk syndrome in tkr results due to interposition of the synovial tissue and that was the answer the tissue is at the superior pole of the patella and it impinges on that femoral component during that extension in that notch cut so are you guys clear with the types of tkr processes are you guys clear with what is patellar clunk syndrome are you clear with the importance and i hope you are clear with the designs and the basic principles behind a knee replacement surgery okay clear enough guys clear enough guys so can i just proceed a little further okay wonderful so your thumbs is up so i think the basics are clear now i must also brief you a little bit about the post operative concerns that may be there following a knee replacement surgery infection would remain one problem if you have not followed the sterilization proper uh, uh, techniques you can have periprosthetic fractures if you were not gentle means fractures around your prosthesis as you are cutting the bone dvt remains to be a big concern deep vein thrombosis because patient tends to be sedentary for a while so we routinely give ecosprin aspirin to most of our people for 6 weeks not to uh, undermine a risk of a neurovascular injury also remains in case your surgical technique is improper so these are some of the common post operative concerns more important post operative concern or you can say the commonest problem that you encounter in total knee replacement is actually loose knee now i have already told you that total knee replacement is essentially a cemented fixation and i have i have already told you the problem with bone cement it loosens with time i explained this clearly even when i talked of the hip replacement surgery that we generally tend to prefer on cemented fixations but in total knee replacement we've unable we've been unable to achieve it so loosening remains the commonest concern good evening debraj now as far as loosening in a replacement surgery is concerned there are two types of loosenings one is a septic loosening infective loosening infection leading to loosening one is aseptic loosening there is no infection and still there is loosening this aseptic loosening is basically a result of inflammatory response what a layman simply calls a reaction and this inflammatory response can either occur as an allergy to the metals that we use it generally tends to be titanium or the cobalt chromium alloy now when this is the scenario we call the process as metallosis like you see in this picture i hope you can pick up that bad metallosis this blackish pigmentation so this is one cause of aseptic loosening otherwise the more common cause of you know aseptic loosening actually tends to be the polyethylene debris that polyethylene spacer that rubber we put between the two metals see rubber is a weak substance so when there will be repeated movements this rubber will be crushed and some debris will be generated those debris act as a source to which body mounts an inflammatory response and the inflammatory mediators lead to lysis of the cement leading to loosening now here there's an eosinophilic infiltrate but there's a blackish pigmentation of metal so what you are finding in this image is metallosis so this lady we got undergone replacement and come to you with loosening she is a case of metallosis but this could have very well been the polyethylene debris causing loosening had that metal debris that backless pigmentation would not have been seen so are you guys clear even with this mcq now this lady she underwent replacement she landed up with loosening implant had to be removed the eosinophilic infiltrate tells you the inflammatory response and the black pigment tells you the problem that this inflammatory response was mounted by the metals clear enough guys so debraj to gary anil uh salima so are you guys with me till here clear with all the principles still here perfect enough perfect enough perfect enough perfect enough and just as i plan to end up this topic 
can I have you guys participating in this one? See, we all know when to replace a name. But can you guys help me out with some, some special scenarios where you have to refrain from replacing a name? So can you guys help me out with that? So can you guys help me out that, that which particular scenario should you be withholding yourself from replacing a name? So can I have some people helping me out on this particular uh, particular question? So if I ask you which of the following will be a contraindication to go with the replacement surgery? So so what do you think is one of that, you know, scenario where you should preferably avoid replacing a name? Excellent, Anil. Wonderful. Spot on. Perfect. A charcoal joint. I think you are very much clear what is a charcoal joint. It's simply a neuropathic joint. The commonest cause would generally be diabetes mellitus. The nerve supply to the joint is gone. So this is what happens to the joint. Massive destruction. It is so massive that there is totally disorganization of the joint. And lot of debris are there. What I mean by debris that you can see plenty of loose bodies. Like you see here. Look, so many loose bodies, destroyed joint, destructive joint. Now, if it is a case of charcoal joint, please don't replace any. The normal joint was gone because the nerve supply was gone. And nerve supply means the protective nerve supply. A joint has a protective nerve supply. Muscle contractions occur to protect the joint from damage during movements. That protective action of you know, nerve supply is gone in charcot. So even if replace, the joint will be gone. In charcot knee, we generally prefer fusions, arthrodesis, because the problem with such so much of destruction is the joint becomes unstable. So when you fuse it, it becomes stable. So this is one indication where you should avoid replacing infection. Active infection is another indication. And last thing, weakness of this muscle quadriceps i hope you're clear quadriceps is this front muscle of the thigh if this muscle is weak because this is the muscle that helps you to straighten and strengthen the knee so even if this muscle is weak we generally try to refrain ourselves from going with the replacement surgery so you must also know when not to replace a knee not to put your foot into the mud although knowing the principles the concerns of a knee replacement surgery is first and foremost so that's all from my side for this particular session. I hope you enjoyed the classes. Uh, any specific doubt you have, yeah, before I just wrap up and finish up the session, any any particular thing that was not clear from the area that I covered today? Clear enough, guys. So I hope I could give you the basic concept behind a replacement surgery, at knee replacement, which is, I think, one of the commonest surgery performed in the field of orthopedics. 10 more minutes. Okay, so that's not in my, my hands there. Uh, you know the timings are fixed so in case you want to listen more of me uh, you know you you have to actually subscribe you can attend some free classes on an academy but better you subscribe only because longer classes only possible on the platform the time allotted to me here is actually very limited okay you can go with the plus subscription okay and where you know you can attend those live classes and you can watch even the recorded classes they are all available there and you want to maximize you can go with the iconic subscription to benefit the maximum an academy prep ladder they are a joint venture you can also uh, opt for both in one go fine enough there okay so just letting you know about few features at an academy in case you wish to subscribe people are just looking for a question bank there is an academy light the light version that we have with us so you can subscribe for that and enjoy the wonderful collection of mcqs we have for you with detailed and very high yield explanations okay okay q angle same as normal knee total knee. yeah yeah apps uh, okay shiram is the q angle same i'll just come down to that point in the end in the end in the end i'll just come down to it in the end so meanwhile just let me show you people some batches you know that are ongoing with us so these are some of the batches that are already going with us. So in case you wish to enroll for any of these batches, please subscribe to An Academy. And this is just the small test calendar, you know, that's being followed at An Academy to make sure that you keep on evaluating yourself also timely. So you can just have a look. Otherwise, 
everything is there on the website and even the pricing the pricing is very very economical so you can uh, you know subscribe and enjoy the benefits of the plus subscription and just in case you are subscribing yes i must tell you uh, my referral code so in case you are subscribing and you wish to use my referral code it will be ortho life so this will allow you 10% off in case you wish to subscribe using this code all right so shri ram is the q angle same after any replacement surgery no see please understand let us suppose this is the femur okay and then this is the tibia fine now this will be the tibial tuberosity now normally the knee is in valgus around 5 6 degrees the mechanics of a knee replacement surgery are little different we cut the femur and tibia perpendicular to each other like this okay and then we put in a spacer now although we put in a spacer the final alignment remains the same so the q angle eventually remain the same but the alignment changes from a real valgus what actually becomes at the knee is a horizontal neutral alignment clear but since you know these bones remain at their place because if we have cut femur perpendicular we have cut tibia also perpendicular and put in a spacer so the tibial tuberosity remains at its place so q angle goes from the pelvis to the tibial tuberosity these are the components so q angle is must to be kept same otherwise there will be dislocation of the patella that may result clear enough so shriram clear with your query also so so we intend to keep the q angle near to normal but yeah never it's possible to 100% replicate the anatomy we try to as closely match the anatomy as possible but yes we do definitely obliterate that natural valgus we have at the knee by trying to produce a neutral alignment okay because we want to load the spacer equally the spacer has to be loaded equally on the medial and the lateral side unlike a natural joint fine enough so i hope you guys enjoyed the session so that's all from my side and i'm really sorry can't put any much longer here because after all this is just a demo class and i'm allowed a limited time over here but promise to give you lot more of information provided you subscribe please don't you forget to use the referral code if you're subscribing to fetch you 10% off so good night for today hope you enjoyed the session bye bye catch you up again good night dev